Hey, I'm Gracie Abrams, and you are watching my iHeart Radio Ask Anything chat. Thank you to Romeo and Most Requested Live for having me to talk about my new song, and it won't work. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna answer your questions. I'm gonna read them and then answer them. Okay. The question, first question is, um, how excited are you for Good Riddance Deluxe? I'm super excited. Says Jake. I'm really amped. It's it was so hard to choose one to cut off the track list, so I'm grateful that I have the opportunity to kind of like sprinkle some more into the Good Riddance world. Theana from Chicago asks, what is your favorite cereal and do you pour the milk first or the cereal first? Uh, my favorite cereal from my childhood um, was Cinnamon Life because I remember in the summers growing up, my cousins and I would always eat it. It was kind of like the summer treat was having Cinnamon Life cereal. And it's now on my rider for tour. So myself and the band and our, our crew, everyone is kind of constantly reaching into this box of Cinnamon Life cereal and taking handfuls. I never in my life have, I think, poured milk first. I always said cereal and then milk. I feel like that's the law, almost. Next question is Leah. What was your first experience with music? What instrument did you learn to play first? Was it natural or did you have lessons? Um, the first instrument that I learned to play uh, was the drums. And I, and I did have um, drum lessons when I was eight years old that felt more than anything kind of like an excuse to hit something really hard and get my feelings out. And um, I had had a few lessons. I remember at the point in which I wrote my first song and I, I didn't know how to play piano. I didn't know how to play guitar at the time um, at all. And so I had written this song off the back of being kind of very frustrated with myself. And I sat at this tiny little drum kit and I kind of like tried to sing lyrics over the drums, which didn't go very well, as I'm sure you can imagine. Um, yeah, it was drums. I love, I love the drums. Next question is, what was your most favorite place that you went to on the first leg of your tour? Oh man, it's impossible to pick favorites. And I'm, I mean that um, this year, the first leg of tour is our, um, U.S. headline tour, and um, I do remember feeling kind of especially energized uh, on the day of the Nashville show, um, which is funny because having just been there with Taylor, it was uh, I had a similar feeling. And when I had initially gone to Nashville for the first time last year, I got really, really sick when I was there and didn't get to experience the city much because I was in this like brain fog, super kind of um, just exhausted, run down mental state. And I, I didn't leave. I remember not really leaving the room that we were staying in um, for the time we were there. And I was so bummed out about missing it. So this kind of felt like this year felt like my first time I got to see Nashville and kind of experience the energy of the city. And I loved it. And I um, loved the crowd, but I love the crowd at every single show. Um, Chicago is always so much fun. San Francisco is so much fun. Um, I mean, everywhere is so much fun. Do you know what I mean? It's impossible to choose, but Nashville had this kind of like, had this thing in the air that I was like, <sighs> um, The next question, it says, uh, your music is so comforting. What's your most embarrassing childhood memory? Uh, I definitely peed my pants in elementary school, which is like never, a fun thing. Next question, um, how did it feel being invited to be on the Taylor tour? What's a typical show day like for you? I felt just so grateful and honored and it did not feel real um, until the first day of, of Eras. Um, it, I don't know, I, Taylor has been my favorite artist in the world for for forever. And so to be kind of around, you know, every aspect of her 
production was so exciting to me, I think, to be able to see kind of like the inner workings up close and, and um, everybody who is on that tour, um, it's just all such extraordinarily great people. And so I think I've, I've just been learning so much from everyone and the energy that everybody brings to tour every single day. Um, a typical show day, uh, we wake up, we go to the stadium, we sound check, and we hang out for a while until our set. And um, Casey, who's in my band, uh, who's one of my best friends in the world, she's my sister, we've got this card game tournament going. Uh, so we're very committed to that. I feel like it's like we sound check, we eat food, and then she and I play cards for a couple hours. And then we play, and then I watch whoever's on after me. Uh, right now it's Phoebe. And then uh, we watch Taylor. I've been watching Taylor like every single night that I am allowed to. Um, Casey from New York says, what accessories would a Gracie Abrams action figure come with? That's a funny question. Okay, right now, probably this boy genius hoodie that I have not taken off. Um, and my dog Weenie. And a, a mug of uh, this specific tea that I drink every day. And then I would also include... Um, been wearing these, um, Pharrell did the, this uh, Adidas collab and they're these like navy Adidas and just packed only that pair of sneakers uh, for like a month. So I'm wearing those every single day. So that would, that, those would be on there. And um, what else do I carry around? I mean, I, it, my star guitar strap and my, my guitar. Really, I just imagine like a leash I'm holding weenie, you know what I mean? Um, how badass is your tour bus? What's your favorite thing about having a bus? Uh, well, how badass would you say a Twilight poster hung up in my room is? Uh, very, I agree. We also have like, um, well, my favorite thing about having a tour bus is that, which, you know, but we all live together, like me and uh, the, you know, all of the band and all the crew, we all live together and we are like this little family. So to have the kind of opportunity that we do on a bus to get to know each other on such a personal level, it's it's chaotic and it's the best thing. Um, it's like, feels like a, feels like sleepaway camp or like something of, you know, your childhood. It feels so, there's like this childlike, chaos and beauty about it. If you are the masked singer, what would your costume be and what would you sing? <laughs> I would be like um, my dog Weenie. I would, I would want like a huge Weenie mascot because um, I'm always curious what it's like to be him. And I would sing Dancing on My Own by Robin. Do you think carrots are better dipped in hummus or ranch? I really do like ranch. Uh, but hummus is my choice. I, I Hummus and carrots are also on, on the rider and I, I it's one of my favorite snacks. Next question, what's your favorite dessert to bake or food to cook? My favorite dessert to bake are these little shortbread cookies that I use this cookie cutter in the shape of like a tiny man, like a tiny gingerbread man. And I make this ro uh, ro raspberry frosting um, with these little rainbow sprinkles. And during COVID, during quarantine, I would um, make jars of these little guys and drop them off at my friend's house. And I like to cook this kind of like white bean tomato stew with like a lot of onions and like shallots and thyme and all this good, good shit. Next question, since you're always traveling and on tour, do you have any workout routine you're able to do amidst all the traveling? Um, I, well walking, but I'm also not like, I'm not like a gym and I don't, I do these like um, kind of low impact floor workouts that are more about breathing and kind of like connecting to your body uh, and it's just kind of micro movements I think it's kind of like based in Pilates stuff but um, 
like 15 minutes a day. It's good for my brain. I consider that to be kind of like a medicine that allows me to be a better version of myself for everyone else that I interact with. It keeps me more sane. Um, next question, mind or heart, which one is more in control of your life decisions? Oh man, uh, probably heart. But I try to be rational more so now than I used to. Oh my God. Okay, next question. What was it like collaborating with Aaron Desner on your album? Um, it was kind of the best time of all times for me. Um, Aaron is, is just one of the most rare people ever. He either is, I've never um, had an even kind of like similar experience um, working with anybody else. It's very particular the way that he and I work together. Our, our dynamic is unlike that of anything I've known before in a creative collaborative setting and um, I cherish it so deeply. It's so kind of a testament to his ability to kind of, he has this, he has this sense of kind of, I think what people are feeling when they walk into his studio and into his life and maybe that's because he has this effect that like makes you want to tell him everything but I really do believe that his ability to listen without judgment um, allows for real honesty and vulnerability um, and like bravery to come through in the songs that that he works on. Um, I think that's felt in all of the projects that he's a part of. And I can hear, I, when, I feel like whenever I listen to a song, like there are now these kind of like Aaron sprinkles of things that I can detect. And uh, it's like little trademark. I don't know. I just am obsessed with his music, all of it. And so to have had the opportunity to, to get to know him in the way that um, I have and, uh, you know, especially through writing is crazy. I've been like the biggest national fan for uh, over a decade and yeah, just love everything he makes. Um, Jessica asks, what's your favorite season? I think the fall. What does the song Clean by Taylor Swift mean to you? And why was it the one you asked her to perform live? Um, Clean has been, uh, you know, an all time favorite song since it came out. And I remember being so struck by how thoughtful it was and how it kind of felt like this release. Um, and it came at a time as all her music does where I felt like I needed to hear it the most. And I didn't know she was going to play it that night um, I really did not, I promise. Uh, I kind of thought it was like a little bit of a joke when she'd asked me if there was anything I wanted to hear. Because obviously you're like not expecting Taylor Swift to. But Taylor is, is uh, the most generous person. Um, and so when she said to everyone, that she was playing clean. I had there, you know, there's a part of me that just like shriveled up and died inside because um, I couldn't believe that any, anything was real. Um, yeah. Oh. Uh, Katie from Vancouver asks if I have a skincare routine. I have a loose one that I don't follow so much anymore, which is crazy because I used to have really, 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 really painful, deep, harsh cystic acne. Um, really bad. Uh, in college, it was awful. I actually found a picture recently of one that I, I had sent a photo to my mom because it, it hurt so much to sleep on one side of my face because it was so severe. It went like all down here, here, it was everywhere. Um, and I couldn't really imagine a point where I wouldn't have 
that be the first thing that I think about when I wake up, which is a bummer because um, there are a lot more important things than acne. Uh, but now my skincare routine is, is more about like hydrating well and like I have a moisturizer that I like and um, oils don't mess me up too bad anymore and I don't know if it's because of traveling or maybe because I'm not drinking enough water or something but I do tend to be on the drier side so I, I'm a big fan of moisturizer and I always wash my face before I go to bed but that's not because of like uh I think that's just because I have this I like I can't go to it makes me feel crazy if I know um Olivia asks who was my biggest inspiration as a kid uh Joni Mitchell I have her I have her uh handwriting tattooed on my body. She is everything to me. Tracy from Tampa, Florida asks, if I had a talk show, who would be my first guest? I would have on my best friend, Audrey, because I think everyone should hear what she has to say all the time. <clears throat> Let's see. <laughs> Leah from Queens asks, is your favorite Spongebob quote still, I'm ready, promotion? Yeah, it is. It's like, of course. Um, Michelle asks, if you randomly empty out your pockets, what do you usually find? It's funny you should ask because I was with friends last night and I, I did just that. And in each pocket, there were about 20 eras friendship bracelets. Normally my pockets are filled with those at the moment. Oh man, how much physical memorabilia have you kept from your career and from the current tour does it fill up room? I have so many things. Um, I have so many things. I have so many letters. That's kind of like the, the, the big, the big one. And I, I should come up with a version of organizing those that isn't just keeping them all in a box, but that's kind of their home as of right now. But it's really, really, really hard for me to get rid of your words um, to me because, um, oops, my alarm, uh, because you're so open and you're so somehow down to, let me into your world and um, I really cherish that. So there's a lot. And then I, I, you know, there's lots of other things that are sprinkled around the house. Uh, I have like framed photos of weenie that you guys have given me everywhere. Um, like weenie salt and pepper shakers, uh, weenie measuring cups. That's the whole thing. What is the last thing you do before you go on stage? We huddle, the band and I, we huddle, and we do this little like um, protection meditation that Casey leads because she is a brilliant genius. Well, that was a lot of questions. I think I've been talking for a hundred years, um, but I just wanted to say thank you again so much for watching my Ask Anything chat. Um, my new song is called I Know It Won't Work. And I just want to say thank you to Romeo and Most Requested Live for having me on your show tonight. And thanks for asking me questions. I love you guys so much. I'll see you out on the road really soon. Um, I love you. Bye.